VIP passenger in Venice. Oh, I'm excited. Trouble for BJ. In Venice, they, they can't have any more drinks. I was on a pistol for Sweet. last night and didn't get up. <laughs> so we had to get a different flight. <laughs> and Kathy flies a thousand miles in search of love. I sit in the apartment all day waiting for him, that's fine. And then we've got the night, <clears throat> so to speak. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze on a far-flung holiday. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Magaluf in Palma, Mallorca. A favourite with British holidaymakers. But although the sun shines, the new airport is causing problems. There are actually two departure areas in the terminal now, Terminal A and Terminal B. And Terminal A here has a walkway uh, from the departure level, which is in fact two kilometres long. Do you want to hurry, please? This is the only overseas airport where Britannia have their own staff. Seven passenger officers to act as sheepdogs. <laughs> it's a good 15 minute walk down there, so give yourself plenty oh, of time. Yes, we will. Some airlines use scooters to cover the huge distances. But Britannia staff have to run. And then there's the language barrier. You're going to take them down in the lift, the wheelchair passengers. Oh, oh no hablo espanol and poquito. Hi Mary, you're travelling to Italy. Oh. With Britannia? Pardon me? No, you're not travelling with Britannia, no? No, I'm okay, not. Okay, pardon, sorry. Estos cuatro pasajeros que no entiendo qué pasa. Oh, no comprende, sorry. They're just sitting over there, wheelchair passenger. I've sent your friends on, so we can just put you two on now. Will somebody be coming to take them down in the lift? Did you leave it up at duty free? These passengers make it. Right. Oh, vale. Right, OK, let's okay. go. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So right. too do the wheelchair party. I'll make sure that, you know, he does get you on. He'll look after you now. But just when it looks like BY 571 Bravo will leave on time, there's yet another hitch. A passenger has collapsed with a suspected stroke, and the paramedics have been called. Are you all right, Mr. Astrick? Yes, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, thanks. All right, look after yourself. I'll see you in a bit anyway. All right. The medics have said 63 year old Jim Raystrick is unfit to travel. He and his wife, June, are being taken to a Spanish hospital. Now the Racetrix bags must be found and offloaded. At Britannia's East Midlands Training Centre, each recruit must prove that they can close the cabin door. It's still moving. Yeah. That's it. Go on, go on, push. Push it. <laughs> no, wait. Goodness, you've really what's, got what's me do it again? You go, have nice holiday. Have nice holiday. Have nice holiday. <laughs> The other trainees can relax. They've all been successful. <laughs> Got much better control on the door anyway. Right, start lifting the handle. This is a manoeuvre qualified lift cabin lift crew have to perform every day. If Joe can't do it, she fails the course. <laughs> oh, goodness. What was it? No, it's not for me, Joe. Back in Palmer, Jim Raystrick is taken to hospital. But finding and offloading the Raystrick luggage is proving a slow business. Passengers and crew have already been held up for 20 minutes. Well, my daughter should have just finished her driving test for now. I wonder if she's having a better day than I am. Hey? Suzanne is supervising the search. It's hard work out here, very, very hard work. Personally, I find it very frustrating because, as English, we expect it to happen there and then. But with the Spanish, they take things very slowly. 
and if you want something doing now, you say to them, right, do it now. And they say, yeah, yeah, and it's like manana, manana. I just think it's very strange that one's there and, and the other one's in the... Hi, it's me. Any word? No news from the test, but my wife got a distinction for part of her uh, Open University thing, so I'm certainly becoming the thicker of the family. Four daughters and a dog, and they're all cleverer than me. This is Joe's 15th attempt, and she's getting tired. Doors on the Besides. She's upset, she's crying. She'll get one last chance later this afternoon. The Racetrix bags are finally found. And as the plane prepares to leave, Captain Birrell gets a call from his daughter. The plane leaves two passengers behind. Jim Raystrick is now in hospital. On reflection, I think it's... Uh, I'm uh, bitter, although Jill doesn't like it. I'm better being here than somewhere in the sky being ill. And I'm really, really satisfied, 100%. I just wanted to get him home, that's all I wanted. <laughs> It's a slight technical delay, something to do with the engine, so I'm just going to find out how much longer it's going to be. A month ago, Cathy Duffy was stationed out in Palmer. Now she's back at Manchester, dealing with a delay of her own. If anyone's asking, or does ask, we're taking the aircraft off stand, we're going to do a few engine runs. It's nothing major, they just want to check something. Um, obviously, don't frighten them, because if you say engine, they're going to get scared. Tomorrow evening, Cathy flies back to Palmer to be with the man she met there and fell in love with. <clears throat> He's a nice guy. He's just so nice. You know, we have a great time together. It's fun. No, I'm looking forward to it. She doesn't want a long delay, and nor do the passengers. It's not fair when you have to come for a certain time and then you just palmed off. We've been here since half past two. You know, you expect to fly out. It means we're missing a night out when we get there. So we're very pissed off, basically. I thought they fixed it. They said they'd fix the problem. They're just going to do checks. Yeah. But the checks are taking longer, is that what you're saying? No, the, check, the checks haven't checked. All oh, right. It's tech. <laughs> Joe, go. I know the procedure. Go, Joe, wait. <laughs> it's late afternoon, and this is Joe's last chance. Yeah, that's it. Excellent, well done. How do you feel? I don't know, really. It's just, I can't believe it, really. It's just... You've done it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's all that fuss about them, I know, yeah. After four hours waiting, a new plane has been found. There's just one problem. It's got no fuel. What is that about fuel? Right, basically what's happened is the fueler has sat down for his dinner and has said that there's no way he's going to get away until he's finished his dinner, so... But he's not given us a time or anything like that? He said he's not been notified of this flight. Hello, BP! You wouldn't like to do an extra aircraft, would you? What, the 578? Because we're absolutely shafted here, we can't find anybody to do it. At home, Chief Steward BJ is getting ready for his own night flight. I've had lords and ladies on flights, famous film stars, obviously Joe Public, and I want to look the best. And I've got to cut myself shaved and I don't believe it. 
Tonight, BJ is flying to southern Spain. Among his passengers, the Heesman family. I've taken these two along because he drinks too much and they look after. <laughs> oh, get out! It's true. Ted, I said, I know why she's done that because he likes his booze. I said she wants us to keep her eye on him. My case is gone. <laughs> Take off, please. Three, two, two, nine, alpha. Call me on the town one one eight six two. Oh, mind your elbow. That's it. Sweet for takeoff. Sure, you don't want a red one. Red one's the nicest. Sweet for you. I've got one, but I love another one. Have another one. Oh, I another one, love. You want a green one? Could you also please ensure the bags? Oh, Oh my God. BJ's flight leaves on time, but in Manchester, patience is running out. Uh, yeah, can I have the wheelchair? Yes, we're going to pop all that for our free boards in a minute. The wheelchair's on. It's getting out of hand now. We're just going to put calls out in a moment for all our free boards. After six hours in the airport, the passengers finally board. I'm so pleased. There you go. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, darling. We've got this, this absolutely mad woman in 29E. I'm sure, she, I'm sure we're a passenger short of a full load tonight. It's going to be a lively flight. In the front cabin are two passengers determined to have a good time. <laughs> in fairness, they, they can't have any more drinks because it's illegal to be drunk on board an aircraft. And they might not be drunk, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say they were, but I think they're heading for it. It's quite a beer, isn't it? No point going on a plane, this is going to be staggered, isn't it? Going on early, isn't it? It's when you're already starting to the beginning, isn't it? They're spending a lot of money with the thing. They must have spent nearly 50 pounds already. Three bottles of red, uh, white wine, one bottle of red wine, two vodkas. It's not it's for dinner, isn't it? <laughs> The minute we get the other end, they'll be completely proliferated. One of them I know doesn't like flying, because he mentioned that when he boarded. He, he did look quite pale. The one with the suntan is actually, uh, he was actually looking quite pale. Uh, but he's got a bit of colour back, uh, as you can see. We shouldn't even be on this plane. We should have been out at 7 o'clock this morning, but I was on a pistol for last night and didn't get up. <laughs> so we had to get a different flight. <laughs> what can you want? You've only got one liver, ain't you? Might as well knock it out when you can. Thanks, sir. What else for you, babe? I've travelled sort of, well, a lot of times, and this is the worst meal that I've ever had. The meat, I think it was dried in the pastry, where you just couldn't eat it. Um, the chai chicken was excellent, very tasty. The steak, I've had worse steaks in very good restaurants. Piping hot and excellent coffee at the end. First class. It's very, very nice. It's very hot. It is, honestly. I've flown British Airways. Everything, and this is much better food than British Airways. Lordy, <laughs> not. Oh, shit, it is. It's 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 The Manchester delay is over, but the moaning isn't. Welcome on board. Flying absolutely terrifies me. The fact that I've been no, sat in an airport for, a, for an four hours has just made it even worse, and now I just feel extremely stressed. <laughs> Right, I'll see you again. All right, darling. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Okay. Kathy's shift is finally over. See, are you in tomorrow? I am. Tomorrow Long evening? Because I'm going to Parma tomorrow night. I'm on form. Five days, but it's standby. Can I go with you? No, I'm going to meet a boyfriend. Come on. Oh, that's not good then. I'll see you when I get back. Back. <laughs> see you later. But true love seldom runs smooth. <laughs> Trainees Aaron and Jason are just four hours away from qualifying as Britannia cabin crew. Bonjour. Last night they were out celebrating. Jason started chatting up a couple of girls and uh, 
I thought it was all going all right. We were singing and all that, but, but uh, I think she had a boyfriend. Yeah. Is this Tracy Farron's purse? Yes. This yeah. is evidence. Look, our trainer was in our room last night. She's left her purse. There's night. one final assessment to go before successful candidates pass out in the wing ceremony. Jason and Aaron must be ready in 15 minutes. First to be assessed, Jo, fresh from her triumph over the cabin door. <laughs> right, Jo, for your overall performance, what I've brought for you is Jo has done very well on the course, even with the fact that she has two small children. We had a problem with the door and the mock-up, but she overcame this. Jo has a warm, friendly personality and will just be wonderful with our passengers. I wish her the very best of luck, and she is going to make an excellent cabin crew member for Britannia. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Yo. That's lovely. You're right, you now. That's, That's all right. Next, Aaron. And uh, I think that you're going to do very well on the line. I think you're going to be popular. And as I said to Jason, I mean, I'll say it to you. I think it'll be better when you pair a split up. <laughs> I think that there have been times during the course where I thought, you know, maybe you're going a little bit too far. <laughs> It's been a gruelling four weeks, but everyone's through. Spice Boy, Jason. <laughs> Second Spice Boy, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron and Jason are now fully qualified cabin crew. We've done it. <laughs> Within days, they'll be representing Britannia in the air. <laughs> That's your portion. Here, here, here. <laughs> oh, boy. Kathy's preparing for her big trip. She's returning to Palmer, where Matthew, her English boyfriend, works. Right, well, I haven't got much more to pack now. Uh, Angel will be like, because he's mad on chocolate. Crazy boy. Okay. With real chocolate chips, that will really impress him. Some casserole mixes, because I'm doing all the cooking. Kathy feels that with Matthew, a barman 13 years her junior, she's finally found a relationship that works. You can always have a holiday, can't you? You can't always find a Matthew. <laughs> so, no, it's Matthew. I'm going out for him, basically. I sit in the apartment all day waiting for him, that's fine. Just sit on the balcony, sunbathing maybe, while he's working. And then we've got the night, <clears throat> so to speak. At Venice Airport, news that a VIP passenger has just arrived. Oh, I'm excited. Britannia representative Lilla Comparetto is masterminding arrangements for her onward flight. Nice to meet you. I'm Lilla from Britannia. How was the trip? We made it fine. She's been fine. Has she? Yeah. Did you have to stop on many occasions? Or? No, we stopped a few no. times just to check temperature and yeah. make sure she was fine. Yeah. Had a very good journey. That's good. That's good. The passenger is a 14-year-old lioness called Kimba. She's been rescued by the Born Free Foundation, who found her huddled in a tiny, filthy cage outside Genoa. Britannia are flying her to a new home, a wildlife sanctuary in England. <laughs> Kimba's lift has arrived, piloted by Captain Clack. missing his slot. Well, we've got a 16-minute airborne slot. Really, that means we should be pushing back within 10 minutes. We've got one more container to be loaded, which is now happening. Um, I think we're going to make it. <laughs> oh, 
Kathy has arrived safely at Palmer Airport, but there's no sign of Matthew. Uh -oh. Matthew, I'm here. Why are you not here? You're supposed to be meeting me. Oh. No, I thought you were going to ring and see if it was on time. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, Matthew. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Bye. I should have rung him. <laughs> so he was on the flight. Oops. He's on his way. Matthew lives a short drive from the airport, but 45 minutes later, he still hasn't arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, you may like to know that we have a rather unusual passenger on today's flight. She is a 14-year-old lioness called Kimba. I feel like I'm on a bit of a high, actually. I, um, I reacted quite strangely when I saw the lioness. Um, I actually had a tear in my eye, which is not like me at all. I just, I expect when, the, when they actually pulled um, the cage open and she was staring at me and I just, it really did hit me. Of course, it's very important to uh, remember what you're carrying in the cargo hold of the aeroplane. Because if we're carrying livestock, we have to keep the cargo heat on or else the livestock will freeze. And if we're carrying flowers, we actually have to turn it off or else the flowers will actually wilt before we get to our destination. Likewise, recently there was a carrier that uh, arrived at Gatwick with a consignment of tropical fish and they forgot to turn the cargo heat on and when they opened the cargo uh, hold, the uh, chap actually found these fish, frozen solid. I do feel a sense of achievement because people have just been full of compliments all day um, and, and I do, I feel quite happy, yeah. If you were going to pick somebody up, you'd go to arrivals, wouldn't you? You'd use your common sense, wouldn't you, arrivals? Yeah, OK. You should be here by now. Cathy has now been waiting nearly three hours. It's Matthew. Hello. <laughs> Not on the camera, Matthew. Thanks. It's past 3 a.m. The journey from the bar that Matthew's parents run to the airport should take just 20 minutes. Thanks. Right, I'm going now. Goodbye. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> The race tricks flew home a week late. Last year, 260 Britannia passengers missed flights through ill health. Kimber, the lioness, arrived safely at her destination. Sadly, she later died following an operation. And Kathy's romance is over. I think in my heart of hearts, I knew it was coming to an end. From his point of view, I think it was just, it was an ego boost. It was airline cheap flights to Disney. That's what I think I was for him. Now, looking back. Next week, can Pat become a stewardess? And BJ reads the riot act. Just about to begin on Channel 4 now, Brookside. Here on UTV, after a night on the tiles, Conway finds rather...